to lose a loved one to the grave. But we have the blessed hope that Jesus gave. God shall wipe all the tears from our eyes when we meet in that land beyond the skies. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Yes, all the time. These guys, these guys have got some zeal about them. When we were standing out on the front front porch, we had the monkey crew all standing out there greeting people, <laughs> and uh, I saw just a lot of traffic going up and down the highway. And these guys were standing out there, Taylor and Tyler, and I said, "Hey guys, there's a lot of traffic going up the road, and they're not turning in here. Just go out there and direct them in here." And so they just took right off out there, and they went out there, and they're going. <laughs> and they stood out there and directed people in, and uh, and got good news and bad news. The good news is this: they got three cars to turn in. The bad news is all three of them are church members that are coming here anyway. <laughs> so, but it's good to be excited about the Lord. This this is revival music. I like that revival singing. And we're going to have some more of it. We got uh, we got more singing to go tonight. In fact, right now we're going to sing 243, and uh, we're going to have the uh, the Hannah family is going to be here uh, tomorrow night. You like southern gospel singing? Amen. If you do, the Hannah family will be here singing, and uh, Brother Robbie will have his guitar, and they'll uh, they'll be singing uh, good old fashioned southern gospel music, and we'll have a rip snorting time. And if you're revived, the music is just a lot better, you know it. And so if we just go ahead and just get revived tonight, we can look forward to tomorrow night with even greater fervency. 243, I am resolved. Let's sing it. One digit off, number 244. I wrote the wrong song down. 244, hold the fort. When we get down there to wave the answer back to heaven, we'll pick our Bibles up and wave the answer back. Number 244. My comrades see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming. Jesus, signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven by thy grace. We will see the mighty host advancing, Satan leading on. Mighty men around us falling, courage almost gone. Hold the Lord, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. grace we will see the glorious banner waving hear the trumpet blow in our leader's name we'll triumph over every foe hold the fort 
thy grace we will Fierce and long the battle rages But our help is near Onward comes our great commander Cheer my comrades, cheer Hold the fort Jesus signal still Wave the answer back to heaven By thy grace we will All right, ushers come ahead. We're uh, going to receive a love offering now. Brother Weedo preached a tremendous message last night and uh, got our heart, heart stirred right off the bat. And we're looking forward to the message tonight and tomorrow night and Wednesday night. And uh, I, I believe there's power in the Bible. There's power in the Word. And uh, when you're saved by the blood of Christ, you've got the power of the blood, and then you've got the power of the Word. And, man, there's no limit to what we can do. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And uh, as we open up our hearts and receive the preached Word, uh, it makes a huge difference in our effectiveness for Christ. And uh, we want to be a blessing to Brother Wido tonight. And, uh, and all of our offerings. So tonight's uh, offering will be a love offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and I'll ask Brother Marcus if you would to pray. Amen. We're always honored to have guests, and when, uh, when guests come to be with us, we want you to feel uh, very welcome and know that you are our honored guest, and we uh, appreciate you being here. Now, we want to recognize a, a few people. Uh, Brother Ernie, you want, to introduce, you want to introduce these folks? No, you probably don't now after they told on you. <laughs> they spilled the beans on him. They, they know a lot about Brother Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, <laughs> do you want to introduce introduce them, Brother Ernie? All right. Now you live you live down where? And Judge Sonia. All right. You're the pastor there. Oh wow! No wonder you know so much about him. Hey. <laughs> I've got some secrets I'll share with you, too, after the church is over. <laughs> we'll catch up. All right. And then uh, Chelsea, wave your hand back here. It's Chelsea. She was saved. And she just, she's an Air Force. She came up, drove up uh, to hear Brother Wido preach. Yeah, he's, a, he's an Air Force guy. Amen. And plus, she's from Texas, too, aren't you? And, and he's from Texas. And so they make, they make a big deal out of that, you know. <laughs> but we're glad Chelsea's with us. And uh, she was saved under the Brother, Brother Wido's preaching. Uh, down in Texas, wasn't it? And uh, when she was nine years old, and she heard by way of the grapevine or the internet <laughs> uh, that Brother Wido was preaching up here, and so she drove up yesterday and and uh, got to hear him preach. It's the first time they'd seen each other in a while, wasn't it? And a special blessing to have them. And then uh, I believe Brother Aaron was talking to Brother Seth today, and Brother Seth brought some folks from Trinity Baptist. They're our friends up at uh, uh, Trinity Baptist in Bradford. So Brother Seth, you want to in introduce your group there? All right, praise the Lord, and uh, Brother Seth will be singing for us in a little while, and uh, we appreciate them. Now, let's see, are we missing, uh, you, you got somebody there, Brother Marcus, you want to introduce? Uh, Melanie, Melanie, good to have you, now is this your first time here? My first 
first time all right good and uh, we're glad you're here we want you to feel welcome and uh, everybody here is not as bad as brother marcus so <laughs> no i'm just teasing he's a good one we if marcus is a keeper we're glad i've got to say that his mother's here too <laughs> no we we love Brother Marcus, and we, we don't pick on Marcus near as much as we pick on Brother Al. Now, we make sure he gets his share, and, of course, he can kind of hold his own and dish out a little bit of it, too. <laughs> now, let's see. We got anybody else visiting with us tonight that we need to recognize? Are we missing anybody? Good to have Jessica back with us tonight. And uh, we got some more that are coming. Brother Fred, uh, Adam's daddy, and, and Miss Brenda went to pick up Andrea Davis and her kids in the church van, and uh, they're about... 30 miles from here or better and uh, so he went up there and I, I knew when I was drawing out the instructions and directions to send Fred there up around Pleasant Plains I knew <laughs> I was taking a chance but we we do pray that they'll be here in time to uh, get in on the closing prayer <laughs> so I believe they will get here in a little while they they did find them I, I called him a couple of times and they had overran the street a time or two but they're on their way so they'll get here uh, We'll just uh, sing some extra specials till they get here. <laughs> let's do this. Let's stand together, and uh, if you're able to stand up, let's handshake just a little bit. Miss Erica is going to play handshake music and quickly. Shake hands with somebody and make them feel welcome. Right. Uh, as you find your way back to your seat, you can be seated. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother Seth. Brother Seth's been our friend a long time. I, I remember Brother Seth. Uh, well, I remember before Brother Seth existed. Uh, <laughs> but I've known him for a long time. He's going to come and sing for us. Uh, his dad pastors Liberty. I, I'm sorry. No, he don't pastor Liberty Baptist. That's my job. Uh, he pastors uh, Trinity Baptist <laughs> up in Bradford. And Brother Seth is his right-hand man. And uh, having my son working with me in the ministry, and I know how valuable he is to me. And, and these guys, listen, honestly, these guys like Seth and my son do a lot more behind the scenes than they ever get credit for. And I mean that. I sincerely mean it. Brother Seth, sing for us. I walked by the tomb of Buddha looked inside and saw his bones traveled on to see Muhammad still wrapped up in his grave clothes then I journeyed to a garden where Joe Joseph left him lay, the precious lamb 
God's own begotten was no longer in that grave. If you knew him like I know him, you would know that he's alive. If you felt him like I feel him, resurrection deep inside, you'd know he's living and death has died. If you're wandering in the darkness, come and step into the light nail scarred hands reach out to help you to pull you safe from death to life friend i too have stood where you stand could i trust in things unseen just one step in his direction then in love he ran to me if you knew him like i know him you would know that he's alive if you felt him like i feel him resurrection deep inside you'd know he's living and death has died you ask me how i know he lives he lives within my heart if you felt him like i feel him resurrection deep inside you'd know he's living and death has died you'd know he's living and death has died resurrection inside that's what we need when it's revival time it's time to be resurrected inside we kind of you know we're saved and we're not going to lose our relationship with Christ but sometimes we lose our fellowship and we get a little bit dried up on the vine and we need to be resurrected inside and that's what revival is I got to ask brother Ernie I've got to ask you a question now <laughs> he thinks I'm he thinks I'm out to get him I'm not this no well no the invitation's not yet you can repent a little bit later <laughs> When you get a dodge, you've repented. <laughs> did you did you invite these folks to come, or did I just show up? Did did you guys come because of him? All right, that's what I wanted to know. We want to do something special for you, uh, brother Paul. Would you uh, hold up one of those T-shirts back there on the back table? We want to we want to give brother Ernie. He's got the he's got the the most visitors here, I believe. Um, did, did anybody invite you, Brother Seth, in particular? Did Aaron invite you or Jesus? Brother Paul did. Okay, well, all right. So we need to do, uh, let's see. You've got one, two, three, four, five, and, and uh, they got four. So why don't we do a T-shirt apiece, one for Paul and one for Brother Ernie then. And, uh, for our doing that. and if the size is not right, then you can exchange and get one that fits you. If that doesn't work, we'll order a pup tent for you. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, and uh, and we'll do something tomorrow night too. Uh, you know, we've got the uh, Southern Gospel Group, the the, the Hannah family's coming to sing, but uh, you know that ought to be some pretty good motivation. That coupled with Brother Widow's preaching, and Spirit-filled preaching, I might add, and uh, then if we add just a little bit of uh, seasoning enticement with the T-shirts, uh, if if you bring some visitors tomorrow night, we'll give away another T-shirt or two and uh, we appreciate you inviting people all right now uh, speaking of people that 
are excited and we, we've talked about different people tonight and their excitement. When I first when I first got saved, I was when we had a revival meeting in my church, I I was excited as I'll get out. I, I mean really when when we had revival, I'd just been saved a little while and and uh, I was just bursting on the inside. I couldn't wait. I thought everybody was excited about revival meeting as I was. And uh, and so and we did have a lot of people who's excited about revival meeting. When when the church houses start filling up, Brother Weedo, I was a brand new Christian, but I just man, I just swell up inside and I think, man, this is so great. You know, people are getting together and and I was just freshly saved and knew what it was like to be on my way to hell and suddenly turned heavenward. And I was so excited. Man, all I want to do is hear people preach and sing and and I was excited about revival services and, and I thought everybody would be that way. But you have to usually invite people to come. Uh, to revival meeting, uh, isn't that true? You got to invite some people, and uh, I want you to know we're appreciative that you're here tonight, and uh, and I hope you get excited about coming back tomorrow night. We want to challenge every one of you come tomorrow night, bring somebody with you, and uh, if you don't have a church of your own on Wednesday night, come back again, and uh, I want to introduce Miss Kimberly Blackburn at this time. She's excited for the Lord too. She's going to be going to India um, as missionary, and she's going to come and sing. And uh, I wanted to give her testimony to you tonight. Uh, she's excited. She loves the Lord, and she wants to see people saved. And, and uh, we had anniversary Sunday here yesterday. And uh, she loves her church. And I wanted to tell you about it. Come ahead, Miss Kim, and then sing. I told Pastor that it's not nice to make me cry right before I sing, but he never listens to me. Um, I'm actually going to read this so I don't forget anything, but almost eight years ago, someone from this church went outdoor knocking. I have no idea who it was. But when they knocked on one particular door, I can only imagine what the thoughts that were going through their head when the six foot seven, tattooed, 350 pound, scruffy bearded bald guy showed up. They can be intimidating, not to me for obvious reasons, but um, but they invited this man to church and he, him and his family came. And then him and his son, especially the son, started in on Aunt Kim. Now there's not a lot of things that someone won't do for a favorite nephew. Those of you who have nephews understand this. Josh has been with me, sometimes living with me for, he had been 12 years at the time. He is my cheese whiz. No idea how that name got, nickname got started, but he is my cheese whiz. He's my, my Joshy, my baby boy, and he's now, by the way, my brave Marine. And married, which is just weird. But um, he asked me to go. I had no desire. But then he started crying, little brat. And um, he actually had to cry twice to get me to two services before I knew I needed to be saved. And then, because of this church, a woman right back there, now one of my best friends, D. Place, led me to the Lord. Hey. Then because of this church, I was at a missions conference about seven years ago this past April. I was sitting where Brother Fred is now, and uh, the Lord started dealing with me over missions. And because of this church, I learned more about the Bible than I ever could possibly imagine. Because of this church, I learned how to act like the woman that causes strangers to automatically assume that I'm a Christian when you walk up and they hide your cigarette for them. That's always fun. Um, because of this church, I met the missionary wife that first suggested I go to Bible college. And because of this church, I learned about OBC. And because of the love of this and support from this church, I survived OBC. That was fun in itself. For those of you who don't know, that's Oklahoma Baptist College, in case you don't know. Um, because of this church, I have made some of the best friends possible. And because of this church, those quirky, crazy, island of misfit toy friends have now made me realize that it's okay to be me. For those of you who don't know, I'm not normal. I'm really not. <laughs> Sorry. I am not normal. But that's okay. Just ask thing one to my thing two over there. She'll tell you. But um, because of this church, I was introduced to a ministry called the Light in the 1040 Window. And because this church is sending me, I'm going to India still doesn't seem possible. So next time you wonder if dealing with the crazy antics of those best kids are worth it, yeah, it's worth it. Next time you wonder if invited, or talking to the visitor is 
means anything, just understand that two ladies in this church and talk to me. It was just chit chat to them, but to me it meant the world. One was Miss Karen and one was Miss Donna. I am gonna cry. <laughs> Next time you wonder if you should invite that person to church, yeah, you should. Even if he's the weird, bald, scary, tattooed guy, um, he may not be as scary as you think because if <coughs> my that tattooed bald guy who, by the way, is growing a Duck Dynasty beard as we speak, is my big brother. And all he is is a big Star Wars geek. He's really not scary at all. And if someone from this church had not summed up the courage to invite that big, scary, tattooed, bald guy, you would have never have been graced with my presence, and your lives would be so empty. It would be so sad. So, yeah. So next time, just remember, it is worth it. It is, there's, I had to get through my song. <laughs> when the race still lies before me and the wind is blowing strong, when the witnesses around me my strength is almost gone when the valley plunges deeper and life scatters all my dreams then i lift my voice to jesus and he gives my spirit wings god gives wings to stumble and my 
began to crumble. I'm a top on eagle's wings. Well, thank you, Miss Kim. We're uh, we're about Christ honoring music around here. We're about Bible preaching, and uh, we're about trying to win people to Jesus Christ. We're about families, and uh, we love each other here. I don't know if you realize that or not, but we love each other, and every church ought to be that way. You ought to love one another, and uh, we joke with one another. You know, brother, you know, I've never found anybody I love to pick on more than Brother Al sitting here, but I want you to know I love this guy, <laughs> and he knows it too, don't you? And uh, everybody loves him, but Aaron, and they're on, they, they root for different baseball teams. Al's a cardinal, but... Other than that, they like each other okay. <laughs> we love one another, and we, we appreciate one another. We love the Lord Jesus here, and we love Bible preaching. Uh, Brother J.D. Wido loves the Lord, and uh, when I hear somebody preach that loves God and loves the Word of God, it helps me. And uh, there's a lot of phony things in the world, but I think Brother J.D. Wido is the real thing. Right, thank you, preacher. Enjoyed all the good singing tonight. And uh, can you hear me okay? Am I doing good? Amen. Let me teach y'all a little poem. Y'all just kind of say this after me. Had a little pig. Fed him in the trough. He got so fat. His tail popped off. Good. I got me a hammer. Got me some nails. And I made that pig. A wooden tail. Hey, y'all did good. I wanted y'all to know the preacher brought in a big time preacher, you know, to teach y'all some poetry. Amen. Amen. You heard about the three little boys and they were arguing over whose daddy was the fastest. One boy said, My dad can take an arrow and shoot it and he can run and catch it before it hits the ground. The second little boy said, That ain't nothing. He said, My dad's got a forty five pistol and he can shoot a bullet in the air and run and catch it before it hits the ground. That's pretty fast. Third little boy said, that ain't nothing. He said, my daddy works for the highway department and he gets off at five every day, but he's home at three. <laughs> That's pretty fast, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter number four. Ephesians chapter number four. And get Ephesians chapter number four in one hand and get Mark chapter number seven in the other hand. Ephesians four and Mark 7. Amen. I'll tell you a little story. It's getting started tonight. and, and uh, We have a watch night service uh, at our church every year uh, to bring in the new year. And at the watch night service, New Year's Eve service, we um, all the preachers in our church preach a message and we'll have a fellowship, kind of a break in the middle. And, and uh, then we come back in and we'll preach, have some more preaching. And then we uh, gather around and join hands and kind of pray the new year in. We've done that for several years. And we, my wife and I, we have 10 grandchildren now. And uh, one of my little grandsons, uh, he's the second to the oldest. And this past New Year's Eve, he was a little bit before that. Um, he's eight, he was eight years old. He's nine now, but he was eight years old. And he said, uh, he said, Papa, can I preach at the watch night service? And my wife was there with me. And, and I said, well, sure, that'd be, that'd be great. And this was all kind of news to us, you know, about him preaching and everything. And so my wife says, uh, you want Papa to help you with your message? And he said, no, ma'am, uh, I got it. I, I, I got it. And so she said, okay. And we were both kind of looking at each other like, what's wonder what he's going to say, you know. And uh, so anyway, it came watch night service, and he had his little suit and tie on, you know, and he walks up, and he opens his Bible up and, and reads one verse, uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, wow, that's a lot of big words for an eight-year-old. I wonder what he's going to say. And he said this. He read that verse and he said this. He said, I just want to be a good boy. He said, I don't want to listen to bad music. He said, the devil is right around the corner. And he said, I just want to be a good boy. And that's all he said. His message was over, but he said it from his heart. And the Bible says, out of the mouth of 
babes and sucklings. Amen. What a blessing. And it touched everybody's heart because it came from his heart. And uh, isn't that a blessing? I'm 53 years old, and you know, when you come to a revival like this, I, I just want to be a good boy. Amen. I just, I mean, I just want to get my heart right with the Lord. I want to be right with Him. And I have a message to preach sometime and, and uh, uh, a three point outline get right, stay right, and die right. Amen. Get right, stay right, die right. And I, I want to die right. The Apostle Paul at the end of his, of his life could say, I fought a good fight, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And boy, what a blessing. Amen. And a lot of Christians, uh, you know, they get saved, and, and, uh, but you know what? They don't stay right, do they? And a lot of Christians don't die right. And they're going to stand before the Lord ashamed. And that's why we need revivals. Amen. We need a kick in the seat of the pants to get us going again. We need to get our hearts right. So we could just say, God, I want to be a good boy. I want to be a good girl. Amen. And uh, come clean with the Lord. Tonight I've got an unusual topic, and, and uh, last night we preached on hell. I've never came out of the gate, you know. I mean, usually the first night you're trying to kind of win everybody over, and last night I just couldn't get that message off my heart, four cries from hell, and so we just preached on hell last night. Tonight I want to preach on, on anger. And uh, how many of y'all have ever heard stories about redheads? Okay, having tempers, okay. And uh, I, I think that when you, as a teacher... Uh, as a, uh, on a subject, when you take a topic, you know, uh, I've got credibility on this topic, okay? And, and I'm not proud of that, but back in my younger days, I really struggled with my temper. I struggled with anger. And I preach in jail every Tuesday night, and there's a lot of people in jail because of domestic violence, men and ladies. I was talking to a police officer not long ago, and they had the music fest down in El Dorado, a couple of years ago and he was telling me about these two ladies that got drunk and they got in a fight and he was telling the one lady if you don't let go of her hair I'm going to tase you you know and I'm just telling you there are all kinds of people that have issues with anger they have anger uh, problems any of y'all ever been a part of uh, what they call road rage <laughs> yeah don't raise your hand uh, if you were the one doing it or the one receiving it or you know but the altars will be open at the end of the service because it's revival time but anyway let's look in the scriptures here Ephesians chapter number 4 and I want to try to help you tonight okay and the Bible says wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee and uh, you know I may be talking about anger tonight and the Lord may talk to you about some other issue that you have and that's the way the Holy Spirit works Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 30 the Bible says this and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption the Bible says let all bitterness I've got the little word all circled let all bitterness and wrath and anger there's our word, anger, wrath, those go together, uh, and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. All right, take your Bibles, turn back to Mark chapter number 7. And I know that God, uh, there's victory in Jesus, amen. The Lord can teach us how to get a hold of our, ourselves and control our anger. And I want to try to help us tonight. Mark chapter number 7 and verse number 14. The Bible says, and when he had called, uh, Mark seven fourteen, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me every one of you and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man it cannot defile him because it entereth not into his heart but into his belly and goeth out into the draught purging all meats and he said that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man for from within 
out of the heart of men perceive, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is like living without self-restraint. Let's uh, just doing whatever feels good. Lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Father, we love you now. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. And I pray tonight, Lord, as we move through the scriptures, Lord God, that you would speak to our hearts. Thank you for all the visitors that are here. Thank you for the home folks. Thank you for Pastor Lord. I pray you'd encourage him and encourage the church here. And God, I pray that you'd help us to uh, just make some adjustments, Lord, in our lives to be better for you. And Lord, uh, there's somebody here with issues, Lord, with what we'll talk about tonight. We all probably have friends and family members, Lord, that have issues with anger and they need our prayers. And God, help us to be able to maybe uh, pack a lunch tonight and be able to help somebody else, Lord, in the future. And God, we need your help tonight. Lord, we love you. Thank you for putting up with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anger has become one of the biggest problems that, that families face today. And again, anger is defined by the Webster's 1828 Dictionary as a violent passion of the mind excited by a real or supposed injury, usually accompanied with a propensity to take vengeance. And boy, when somebody does something bad or wrong to us, we want to get back at them. And, uh, and that's really not the way it's supposed to be, okay? And, and we're supposed to turn the other cheek, and we know what the Scripture says. And I have a lot of illustrations and all that, but uh, statistics and things of that nature. But I'm telling you that uh, anger is a real problem. It's a very serious problem. And where does anger come from? Well, according to Mark chapter number 7, it's one of those things... Uh, you know, that comes from inside of us, okay? And it's kind of like character. Uh, character is like uh, doing things over and over, doing right consistently and by reflex and so forth. And, and you put pressure on somebody and, and it kind of reveals what's already inside of them related to their character. And anger is one of those emotions and, and God's the one that gave us that emotion. In fact, God has emotions as well. The Bible says about the Lord that uh, the, uh, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. And we know that God uh, had righteous uh, anger, uh, righteous indignation and, and against his people sometimes when they get off into sin against the enemies of God, but yet God did all that without sinning, didn't he? Because God is perfect. And I'm just saying that, you know, the, the question is, where does this anger come from? And uh, it comes from within us, okay? And uh, it comes from our heart. You know, a lot of times when we get mad or something, we want to blame, well, she said this or he did that. No, it's not, it's not on them. It's coming out of your heart. It's not because somebody pushed your button or made you mad. It's already inside of us, and it's what's coming out of us. When I was losing my temper, you know, in my younger days, it, that was already in my heart. It wasn't somebody else's fault, okay? And, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to help us tonight to understand I need to stop blaming everyone else and, and take responsibility for the problem that's uh, in, inside of me. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Okay, it's coming out of our heart. Take your Bibles and turn to Ezekiel chapter number 36. Ezekiel chapter number 36. And I want to move very kind of quickly through some scripture here, but Ezekiel chapter number 36 and... Maybe you'd want to mark this verse in Ezekiel 36. And the answer is not to change the outside uh, and, and adjust your circumstances. The answer is to change that which is inside your heart. And only Jesus Christ can do that. Amen. And uh, boy, what a blessing it is. And I, I couldn't do it by myself. I'm telling you, I, God had to get a hold of my life and my heart and, and change my heart. And, and he helped me. And I just want to help somebody else now because I've been helped. And Ezekiel chapter number 36 and verse number 26, Ezekiel 36, 26, the Bible says this, A new heart also will I give you, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And uh, God wants our hearts to be pliable, okay? And he wants to give us a new heart. We know 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So in Christ, we're forgiven. We're made new. We're new creatures in Christ. 
and uh, I couldn't do it by myself but I thank God that Christ made me new and uh, the Bible says and go ahead and turn to Psalm 62 very quickly Psalm 62 everybody okay Psalm 62 and uh, let me just read you a verse here and we're talking about anger and the, the, the problem of the heart, I mean, it, 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 it's a heart problem, okay? Uh, the matter of the heart, I mean, it's a, uh, you understand that we have to change our thinking. The Bible says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And, uh, well, we need to be careful uh, what we put our expectations in. Now, look at Psalm 62, 5. The Bible says this. This is one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. And the Bible says this, Psalm 62, 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Only upon God. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. Now here's the problem, okay? My expectation is from Him. It's a very powerful verse. Most anger is a result of broken expectations. I thought you should have did that, and you didn't do what I thought you should do. I put my expectation in you, and you disappointed me, and I got mad. So it was broken expectation. You didn't do what I thought you should do. And, 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 you know, it's not sometimes even circumstances. You can get mad about circumstances because they didn't, the circumstances didn't go the way you thought they should go. The problem is we don't put our expectation in people because people can change. You don't put your expectation in circumstances because circumstances can change. That's why we need revival because every once in a while we need to be reminded that I need to push the reset button and I need to hear it over and over again. Hey, my soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from Him. And I'm telling you, you want to get victory over your temper, you quit put ex your expectation in other things and put your expectation in God. Okay? You don't even put your expectation in yourself. Look, turn to Jeremiah chapter 10. Very quickly, here's another very strong verse, okay? Jeremiah chapter number 10 Go ahead and look at Jeremiah 17, 5. Let me give you this verse in Jeremiah. Boy, wow, this is a strong verse right here. Jeremiah 17, 5. You might want to mark this one. I don't have it marked. I'm marking it right now. Thus saith the Lord. Look what the Bible says. Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Whoa. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh make make flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. When I put my trust in people, I'm telling you, man, my heart's not trusting in the Lord. And God says curse, and the curse is, here's the curse, you're going to get your expectations broken when you put your expectations in people. Man, please don't put your expectations in the pastor. You got a good man of God and he loves the Lord, but I'm telling you, listen to me, people that follow the preacher, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm telling you, you're going to get disappointed to find out preachers are human too. And we got problems just like everybody else's. I'm telling you, put your expectation in God, and God never changes. I am the Lord, I change not. Isn't that a blessing? And wow, all those times I was flying off the handle because it was because I got mad. And I couldn't blame it on anybody else because it was coming out of my heart, preacher. My heart wasn't where I needed to be with God because I had made the mistake of, of thinking in my mind, well, why'd this happen and why'd that happen? And I'd get all mad and throw things and do stupid stuff. Why? Because I was out of control and I was sinning against God and I was sinning against other people because my expectations were not in God like they should have been. Are you all listening to me? I'm trying to help you. This is a life lesson type message. You might have struggled with your temper all your life, but maybe nobody explained it to you and taught you from the Word of God how you can have victory over that. Look at Jeremiah 10, 23. You don't even put your expectations in yourself. Look at this. Jeremiah 10, 23, the Bible says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Hey, the old song says, I can't even walk without you holding my hand, man. I don't know whether to go in or to go out. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. I need God to lead me and to guide me. I don't know whether to go in or to come. I don't know what to do. I've got to have God's help in my life. 
But I'm telling you, most anger is a result of broken expectations. Unbiblical expectations. Listen to me now. Unbiblical expectations lead to bitterness, resentment, vengeance. The Bible says, God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. When we take it into our own hands and try to settle the score or get even, dog eat dog, that's not scriptural. That's unscriptural. Listen, ingratitude, depression. You may say, well, I have the right to be angry. You don't know what she said to me. No, you've got an unbiblical thinking process. You're not thinking right. God, is, God will shut you down. He'll cut off his blessings. Why? Because you're trying to run your own life instead of trusting him and turning it over to him. We need to get our expectations from God. Can I tell you this? His word is full of expectation. We call them Bible promises. Bible expectations. Here's one I like. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, I could just know and expect that when I did that, when I called upon the name of the Lord, hey, he saved my soul. Amen. That's a Bible expectation and God keeps his promises. That What about Philippians 4, 19? But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. That is a Bible expectation that I can claim. And God's never failed me. You can look at me and tell that I haven't, I'm not going hungry. An expectation from God is one that God's word has told us that we can have. Sinful anger comes from our hearts when we set wrong expectations. Man, I don't want to do that. Very quickly, there are some ways that people deal with anger in a sinful way. One is people sometimes when they get mad, they, they, they internalize, they turn inward. With, the, with, their, with their anger. It builds up and builds up inside of them. And, and listen, they're just like time bombs, uh, you know, uh, bottling all this stuff up and, and, and the destruction, it turns to bitterness and depression. And man, a lot of those people, they're dealing with that anger and they, they turn inward with it. And their stress level's real high and, and it'll destroy their body. It'll take you down. It's like a cancer. It'll mess you up on the inside. Another thing is they take it out on others. Man, we've all seen that, man, where, where a dad or somebody gets mad and they lash out at the kids. The little kids are living in fear because they don't know when dad's going to be okay and when he's, you know, when he's just kind of sitting on edge. A lady came to Billy Sunday, an old-time preacher, uh, and he, she tried to rationalize her angry outburst. And she said, there's, there's nothing wrong with losing my temper. She said, I blow up and then it's all over. That's what the lady told Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday said this, he said, so does a shotgun and look at the damage it leaves behind. You better believe it. I'm telling you, you, know, you may feel better after you lose your temper and when you cool down all that, but what about all the damage that you're doing to your family, your friends, the people you go off on? People who respond in anger are destroyers. It's, it, anger destroys relationship. It destroys marriages. It destroys families. And let me just say this. It's an, another thing, too, uh, is that um, it'll carry on from generation to generation. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. If I deal sinfully with my children and, and, and all that, guess how they're going to deal with my grandchildren? You know, what we do in moderation, our children are going to do in excess. They'll take it to the next level. And, and man, I don't believe in that monkey see, monkey do. A nut doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Pastor's got some pear trees in his yard. Pears, there's some pears on the ground. They didn't fall far from the tree. They're laying under the tree that they came, they came out of. And that's the way it is with kids. Man, I don't want to be lashing out with my kids and being angry and going off on them and all that in, a, in an unbiblical way, Pastor, because I don't want my kids to treat my grandkids that way. I sure don't. Now, how to respond biblically to anger. That was unbiblical. How do you respond biblically to anger? We need to recognize our wrong thinking in our heart that produced the anger. What expectations did I have that were broken? Why did I set my expectation in those people or in my children or in my work people, you know? I mean, instead of God. I must take responsibility for it. And I need to stop and pray and ask God to help me to stop putting false expectations in my life. You don't have to respond uh, sinfully. That's a choice that you're making. I didn't have to lose my temper. I didn't have to. I'm telling you, I did not have to go there. I did not have to do that. 
That was my choice to act like that. I didn't blame anybody else. I can't blame my brother or anybody else. Well, she made me lose. No, nobody made me. It was coming from my heart. Are y'all listening to me? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You're not a victim. You're an overcomer through the Lord Jesus Christ. His Holy Spirit lives inside of me now, and I need to yield myself to the Holy Spirit of God and those sinful thoughts, and when I start getting worked up and all that, I need to bring that into captivity and say, hey, that's not right. I need to cast that aside, and I want to walk in obedience to the Lord. He's the one that saved me, and I want to be a spirit-filled Christian. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, one, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I want to attack the problem. I want to go after it and just let God know, hey, God, uh, I love you, and I want to walk in the Spirit, amen? I want to walk in the Spirit so I'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's a choice that I can make. And I want to choose biblical forgiveness. Biblical forgiveness. Boy, what a blessing. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If I don't you know, find it in my heart to forgive that situation, that person, Man, true, true forgiveness, is, it's that. It's choosing Jesus over your feelings and over your thoughts. Biblical forgiveness is a daily choice. We need to die daily with the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 31. I'm glad that I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow. I'm glad that Jesus forgave me anyway I didn't deserve his forgiveness some I mean, of you got some stuff in your heart right now towards somebody you need to let that go you need to choose forgiveness you need to let, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you man God says put all that stuff away if we're going to have revival see that's the problem in a lot of churches you got a lot of good people that are sitting in the church and they're singing all the songs but they got, they got baggage in, in their hearts you know, you got people get out of church, just service like this. You know, you have a great service, and people get out of here and go home, and they'll vent. They'll vent and get angry with their kids and, and throw things and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and little children live in fear, not even knowing, you know, what to say or what to do. And I'm telling you, if you think that doesn't affect a little child, that, that affects little children, man. They don't know what to do. 1 Peter 4, 8, the Bible says, Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. I mean, we ought to have a red-hot love among ourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Man, charity covers. It covers. Let me give you a quote. Here's a very good quote. I like this quote. And uh, I write a lot of little quotes down in the back of my Bible, and blank pages and all that. But here's a quote I want to give you, okay? You want a good quote? Listen to this one. Love God... Love God, and you will love others. Love others, and you will lose your anger. Huh. Let me say it again. Love God, and you will love others. Love others, and you will lose your anger. It's a good quote, isn't it? It sure is. You know what the problem is? The problem's always been when I'd get mad and lose my temper. I wasn't loving God the way I should love him. I put my expectations in something else. And that's why I got all mad. mad. I want to love Jesus the way he deserves to be loved. doesn't matter how other, other people respond. I want to allow Jesus to set my expectations. I want to allow Jesus to set my expectations. I want to set my expectations in the promises of God. I want to walk in the Spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Why does it say, be not drunk with wine? A drunk man is controlled by another substance, that substance being alcohol, but be filled with the Spirit. When we're filled with the Spirit, hey, all that anger stuff is out the window. Why? We're controlled by another substance, that substance being the Spirit of God. 
We need to, that's why we need revival. That's why we need revival. I want to set my expectations, let Jesus set my expectations. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to forgive and love others. Young people, please listen to me. You say, well, preacher, you don't even know, you don't even know what, what they did to me. You don't know what they did to me. Hey, I don't have to know what they did to you. I don't want to know what they did to you. But I'm telling you this, you, you, need to, you, need to, you need to get over that. Because you're either going to live with the bitterness in your heart for the rest of your life that affects your personality and, and all that, or you're going to choose forgiveness. And I'm telling you, everybody, look here. When you choose forgiveness, when I forgive somebody, I get release. Now, that doesn't mean the offender, if they, I mean, if they've done me wrong, that doesn't mean they're off the hook. But God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. But you know what, I can go on and, and, and you know, it's kind of like, how many of y'all have ever fished with a cork? You know, you got the weight on the cork, it's like cutting your weight and your, your cork comes right back up. And you can go on through life and have your smile and, and live in victory. Because you forgave that person that did you wrong, and you're just letting God take care of your light work. Man, I want to, I, that's what I want to do, man. I want to be a, a forgive. That's why the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Man, God wants to let it go. Every day we need to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Forgive. And just trust God. A little acrostic. A-C-T. The A is accept what you can't change about your circumstances, about yourself, about others. Accept what you can't change. The C is change bitterness to forgiveness. Change bitterness to forgiveness. And the T is trust God. A-C-T, trust God, is the T, trust God. I'm in control of my spirit. Amen, I'm in control of my spirit. The spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit or a wounded spirit it dryeth the bones. Man, I don't want to go through life with a broken spirit and a wounded spirit and lash it out at other people because I had my expectation in something other than God. God's never failed me. Earthly friends may prove untrue. Doubts and fears assail. One still loves and cares for you. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. It's my responsibility to be governed by the Word of God. Amen. I just want to have a bunch of Bible expectations that I live by. And, you know, I'll just go to, go to my grave just, just living on Bible promises and loving the Lord. I don't have to be a slave to my anger anymore. Are y'all listening to me? I don't have to be a slave to my anger anymore. I can have a life free from the power of this sin, of anger, if I'll apply God's word to my life. I'm going to close tonight with a, with a missionary story. David and Jolene Sloan have been missionaries for a long time, and they're actually back in the States now and, and uh, working out at the Bible College in, in uh, California. David and Jolene Sloan were missionaries to the Ukraine for many years. We had them come to our, our missions conference, and, and uh, we have an international dinner on Saturday night, and, and we have four or five missionary families there, and we have an international dinner with meals from different, different countries, you know, and uh, Oriental and, and so forth, Mexican, Chinese, and then we have good old, uh, you know, home cooking, amen, fried chicken and so forth. And so it's a, it's a highlight of the week and just fellowshipping with the missionaries. And I noticed that Miss Jolene Sloan throughout the week that she would be helping the ladies kind of clean off the tables. And I noticed that, uh, that she had been burned. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody that's been burned, uh, like scar tissue where it kind of, you know, the skin, you, it's discolored and so forth. And you can tell when somebody's been burned. And uh, I would have never in a million years asked her what happened to her. But on Saturday night of our missions conference, after the international dinner, we let the missionary wives give testimonies. And she got up and Jolene Sloan told her story about how she was a little girl when she was a little girl that her mother, her mother abused her physically. Her mother took boiling water and, and uh, burned her, poured water on her, and her mother went to prison. And um, anyway, uh, she was physically abused, and she went to live with her grandmother and, uh, in Oklahoma City. And one day some bus workers from Windsor Hills Baptist Church went by and knocked on her door. 
and uh, she was living with her grandma and she started riding the church bus when she was four years old and she got up and got to school age and her bus captain got burdened about little Jolene and, and preacher he paid her way to go to the scholarship or to go to the Christian school he paid her way to go to the Christian school at Windsor Hills Christian Schools little Jolene grew up in the Christian school when it came time for her to uh, that bus captain went to the mission field the next bus captain took over and he paid her way to, to school she went all the way through their Christian schools surrendered her life to be a missionary went to Bible college at Oklahoma Baptist College and she met her husband David and they surrendered their lives to missionary to be missionaries and, and they went to the mission field and, but one day Jolene was thinking about her mom and they were going to be going out her mom had gotten out of prison all these years had gone by and her mom had gotten out of prison and she found out I think she was living in Arizona at the time they were on their way out to California and they found out where her mom lived and she hadn't seen her in all these years. They found her mom, located her, and they went to see her and it was a little bit awkward, the first meeting, and you know, it wasn't really like maybe if we saw our mom, we'd give her a hug and all that. It was a little bit, a little bit awkward just kind of getting reacquainted. Spent about 45 minutes with her the first meeting. They went on out to California. They came back through. The second time, they took her out for a meal. And listen to this. Jolene Sloan, because of the grace of God and the forgiveness of God, she found it in her heart to forgive her mother. Though she saw the scar tissue and she saw you know, what had happened to her every day, she had to live with that, but because of the grace of God in her life and the love of God in her life. And Jolene Sloan had put her expectations in God. Are you listening to me? And she found it in her heart to be able to forgive her mother for what her mom, did her mom deserve her forgiveness? No, she didn't. But Jolene forgave her anyway. Jolene was totally innocent. She was just a little girl. And her little precious skin was melted off and, and, and the scar tissue and all that. Her mom was totally guilty. Jolene was totally innocent. Are you listening to me? But because of the grace of God in Jolene's heart and life, she forgave her mom and she got release. Are you listening to me? She got release. And you know, it kind of reminds me, that kind of Christianity reminds me of Jesus when he hung on the cross. And they did all the things to him. They plucked his beard out and, and they spit on him and they mocked him. And if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. You know, I mean, just, I mean, just all that stuff. His visage was so marred that I mean, he didn't even look like a human being. The Bible said he, said he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep for his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And friend, I'm telling you, the song says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He knew me and yet he loved me. He looked beyond our faults and he saw our need. But you know, when he was hanging there, he said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. The very people that did all that stuff to him. Put the nails in his hand. The spirit. Hey, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Are you listening to me? You know, if, if we had anger in our heart, we'd be saying, all right, Father, I've had enough of this. Let's zap them. All those angels, 12 legions of angels, I'd have called them down. You know, no, listen, no, no. Here we go again. Refer to point number one. What do you got your expectation in? Man, we can't, you know, we can't do that. We can't take it into our own hands. And all I'm saying tonight is, wow, if we're going to have revival, if we're going to have revival, we're going to have to deal with, with, with some issues in our lives. Wrath and anger and bitterness, evil speaking, malice. We're going to have to get all that stuff out. When I was a little boy, it's a bad illustration, but I'm going to mess your supper up. But when I was a little boy, I wouldn't chew my spaghetti good. That's not good when you don't chew your spaghetti good. And I'd eat some corn and spaghetti, and my tummy would sour because I didn't chew my spaghetti good. And I'd get sick in the middle of the night, my dad snoring. I'm scared, I'm crying, my mom's got the wash rag on my head, got a sack. And I'd get all worked up, I'd get scared. I'd, I'd think, Elizabeth, this is the big one. <laughs> Amen. I wandered far away from God, now I'm coming home. Amen, I'd get so sick. And when I would throw up, I mean, it's almost like I knew it had to happen before I was going to feel better. Are y'all listening to me? And finally, I'd get, you know, and I'd throw up, and I'd puke my toenails up. And my mom would get me settled down finally, and she'd be bathing my little face. And 
trying to get me calmed down. Sometimes I'd strain. I didn't have nothing else to throw up. Little blood vessels in my eyes would burst. Uh, terrible patient. She finally get me calmed down. And you know what? I felt better because I got all that stuff off my tummy. Lord, I just want to be a good boy. I don't want to listen to bad music. The devil's right around the corner. I don't want to lose my temper no more, Lord. I'm sorry. I don't want to put my expectations in other things. Lord, I want to put my expectations in you. The Bible says looking unto Jesus. The Bible says beseek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says that in all things he might have the preeminence. He wants to be first place tonight. That's why we need revival. We need to be reminded of that. Let's bow our heads tonight. Thank you for listening. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. You can't blame your anger on somebody else because it's coming out of your heart problem of the heart is the heart of the problem. It's, your, it's, it's a heart problem. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I wonder how many say, Pastor, I'm so thankful tonight that I'm saved by the grace of God. I do know if I die tonight, I'd go to heaven. Would you slip your hand up if you have accepted Christ as your Savior? Just hold your hand up there. God bless your hands all over. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. If you're here tonight and you're lost, you've never been saved the Bible way, God loves you. He loved you so much that he sent his son, his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus hung on the cross and he suffered and bled and died to atone for your sins, to cover your sins. And he wants to give you his righteousness and he wants to take your unrighteousness, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. I appreciate him taking the rap for me, bearing my sins in his body on the tree because he loved me. Greater love no man this than a man lay down his life for his friends. He willingly laid down his life for us. And if you don't know him as your Savior tonight, it's our prayer that today would be the day of your salvation. Is there somebody here tonight say, Pastor, I'm lost. I've never been saved the Bible way. I don't want to die and go to hell. Would you pray for me? I've been thinking about this. Anyone here like that? You just slip your hand up. We're not embarrassed. We just want to pray for you, not call you by name or anything like that. Anybody, anywhere. All right. I wonder how many tonight would say, Pastor Weedle, I've had some issues with my anger. I really have. I've, I've struggled with my temper over the years. and God speaking to my heart. I love the Lord. But I have had some issues with wrath and anger and some of the things you're talking about tonight. And God speaking to my heart. And I want you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up? Just be honest enough. All right. God bless you. There's hands all over. I appreciate that. appreciate your honesty. God bless you. Thank you. How many of you know somebody, you love, know them pretty well, and you love them a lot, but they've got issues with their anger, maybe a friend or a family member, and you're concerned about them? You'd say, Pastor, I've got somebody like that. Man, I know he's, that guy's got some issues. Would you pray with me for, for that person? Would you slip somebody, your hand up there? You know somebody, you've seen somebody like that, and you know they've got some issues in their heart. God bless you. How many of you have just a special need? Maybe you're going through a trial or testing something that you're going through in life and you say pastor would you please pray for me I'm just kind of been bogged down just kind of going through it would you pray for me would you slip your hand up just a special need all right God bless you God bless you praise the Lord father we love you tonight Lord we thank you Lord for the word of God and my soul my soul wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him Lord, all those times, Lord, when I was losing my temper, Lord, and, and had major issues with anger, Lord, it was all because I had my expectations in people or in myself or in circumstances. And God, I just didn't really understand, Lord, that I was reacting. And God, I thank you for giving me victory and helping me, Lord, in this area of anger. And God, if we're going to have revival in our church, Lord God, we've got to have deal with some of these issues in our heart and quit trying to act like we don't have a problem when we do have problems even as your children Lord we have problems that need to be dealt with because we're not dealing with them according to the scriptures Lord tonight we ask you to help us all to make some adjustments and Lord we lift up those that raise their hand Lord not only here but also praying for someone else that's not here a family member a friend and Lord it's a serious thing 
Lord God, we need your help tonight. Lord, those with special needs, I pray you'd bless and meet those needs. God, we need you desperately, and we love you. Thank you for putting up with us, dear Lord, in, in, in spite of our frailties and our faults. Lord, we just need, we need to be closer to you tonight. And I pray in this invitation time you'd help us to respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.